What's, What's poppin', Connor? Hi, I'm Josue. Uh, today is October 15, 2018. And I'm Angel. On today's show, we have Sidarian Johnson as our special guest, and we will tell you all about Panama City residents without water. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for today's episode of Total Recap. Last Monday, Sears filed for bankruptcy. The retail store, which opened up a century ago after the Civil War, has finally met its match, not being able to compete with the tanks of Walmart, Home Depot, and now Amazon. Although not all hope is lost for Sears, Sears has arranged a $300 million loan from Wall Street lenders to help it keep it open longer and help keep the empl employees paid. And try to keep moving forward. Sears is going to close down 142 more stores to reduce expenses. So if you want to help out the company, keep in mind everything will be on sale and it will help them out. Panama City, Florida residents are left to, with scrap and debris after their encounter with Hurricane Michael and struggle to stay strong on their fifth day without proper running water or electricity. There have been at least 18 people that have died in connection to the storm. About 58,000 people have homes without power and are currently surviving on their own needs. Even as the family struggles to have some running water, it is taking some from a muddy pond to flush out their toilets. We will keep an eye on the situation and keep you updated. We'll be right back with our special guest, Darian Johnson, after this commercial break. Hey, class, how are you doing today? Sean, Juan, I'm gonna need y'all to leave the room for a minute. I need to talk to David. Thank you very much. So, how are you doing, David? I'm doing good today, sir. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. You got a problem with you using your phone, man? Mm, like, I guess. Why is, am I failing? Yes, sir, you have a 50 average. If you could just go ahead and please put your phone away. You know, it would really help your grade. I'll, I'll put it away and I'll start paying attention. I'll, I'll get my work done. You know, if we can just go ahead and keep your phone away for the rest of the day, I'm gonna go ahead and call the other students in. We'll have a solid day. I'm gonna talk about what we're gonna do. And then we'll be good. Yes, Thank sir. you, dude. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. We want to welcome today's special guest, Sidarian Johnson, a member of the CHS band. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, man. For those who aren't familiar with your position, would you please explain it? A uh, drum major is basically the people who stand on the field and they conduct for the band, and that's about it. Mm, okay. Simple. What's it like to be in band, particularly, uh, what's your position? So it's really like difficult, especially like to be a drum major, because there are so many responsibilities that come with it, and it gets overwhelming most of the time, but I challenge through that stuff. Have you had any hardships being in hand? Yes, I have. But the hardships that I had was just not keeping up with uh, corner sheets for like people who march the spots. It's very difficult because they lose them all the time. But yeah, that's it. Being a drum major, what's the best type of experience you've gotten? Going to this drum major camp that at U of H, you meet a lot of different drum majors. And so they're very like open-minded and cool people to, to talk to. Uh, for anyone who's looking to join band, would what advice would you give them? I'd say just do it. Just Get do that it. bread and just do it. Just do, the bread. <laughs> just do it, chase the bread. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> what do you hope to achieve this year? <laughs> um, I hope to achieve to go to state state UIL comp contest, and that's like where the best bands are. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's bad. Well, that's all the questions for the day. Thank you for joining us today, Sedaria. Thank you for having me, Angel and Hostway. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> now we will take another quick break.
National Yearbook Week is coming up next week. Daily participation will get you $5 off each day on your yearbook purchase. On Monday, follow us on Twitter at CHS Flair, then post a school-related picture and tag us in it. On Tuesday, it is Disney Character Dress-Up Day. Wednesday, you get to guess how much candy corn is in the jar. Thursday is Decades Dress-Up Day. Friday is the Big Buy Day. When you buy a yearbook, you will receive a pizza and pumpkin treat. Seniors can enter a raffle for a free one-fourth page senior ad. Today, Abraham will be showing us how to fry chicken on, on Cooking with Culinary. Hi, welcome to Cooking with Culinary. I'm Claire and this is Abraham and he's going to be showing y'all how to make some fried chicken and grilled corn. Alright, so for today guys, I got probably like the easiest episode for today. We're going to be making some fried chicken, the way you see it like restaurants like Popeyes or Kentucky's fried chicken. Alright, so I got my chicken thighs and my chicken legs and what I'm first going to do, I'm going to lightly coat these in flour. And then once I got them lightly coated, pat it all off, dip it in your egg wash. And what I've done with my egg wash is I've mixed salt, pepper, and a little cayenne powder. Just make it spicy. And now this is the important part. If you want it to look super crispy, you're going to have to coat this thing. Uh, you're going to have to seriously coat this thing in flour. The gnarlier it looks, the crispier it gets. and get it, get all the flour everywhere. You can see that? See how gnarly it looks? That's just gonna allow it to get super crispy. So what I've added into the flour is I've pretty much added some salt, pepper, probably uh, three tablespoons of salt, um, three tablespoons of pepper, and I've added mm, probably like a tablespoon of cayenne pepper, and I've added a little garlic powder. For right now, I'm ignoring the dry hand, wet hand method just to make sure that everything is coated liberally in the second coat of flour. So now I've got all my chicken coated in the flour. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop these in the fryer for about 15, maybe 20 minutes, and then after that, you need to let them rest for another 10. Because if you don't, you cut open to it, it's just going to let all the juice run out and you might find a little blood in there. Now you just need to let it rest. That's very important. Now I've got my oil set at 350. Whenever this chicken hits the fryer, it needs to bubble and start frying. Whenever you fry something, dip it in and lay it away from you. Don't just drop it in, that's how you burn yourself. Now I've got these frying in here, so next thing I'm going to show you is how to grill corn. Now grilling corn is probably one of the easiest things you can do if you have a grill and you like corn. What I've got right here is my corn. I'm going to take two pieces of my foil, and all I'm going to do is place it in there, and wrap it, and then place it on your grill. So I've had these guys cooking for about 15 minutes now, and you can look at them, they're just golden brown. Now I'm going to take these guys out and put them on my rack, 
to get all of the excess grease off of them and let them rest. Remember, you have to let these rest for at least 10 more minutes because it's just going to keep cooking. Food keeps cooking until it gets cold. And these guys just came straight out of the fryer. So what's happening now is all of their juices, if you cut it open right now, all of their juices will just fall out. And you'll be left with some dry chicken. While I'm letting the chicken rest, I just pulled the corn out of the grill and it's steaming hot. Be careful whenever you unwrap corn. It will burn you because it's crazy hot inside. If you want to know if your corn is cooked, take your finger and press it. If it presses down and you see all the corn juice fall out or whatever it's called, I don't know what it's called, then you know it's ready. If you want to, you can eat it straight like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to separate it from all the leaves. What I do, I just grab it from the bottom and I pop it off. And I've got my corn. All right, so this is how you make grilled corn and fried chicken, guys. It's Cooking with Culinary. I'm Abraham. See you next Monday. We want to finish up our newscast today with a few announcements. Tryouts for girls basketball will be October 17th in the pit gym from 3 to 4.45. You can sign up with Coach Houston or Coach Ogden to receive information. The High School Democrats Club will meet this Thursday at 3 p.m. in room 304. They will have the U.S. House of Representative candidate Stephen David as a, as a guest speaker. Please join us. Physics Club is meeting Wednesday, October 17th. You'll want to be in room 218 right after school or turning your old CD or DVD into a small hovercraft and, the race, and then race them. Meeting lasts until 3.30. It's rivalry week. This Friday, the Connor Tiger football team takes on the Woodlands in the Moorhead Stadium at 7 p.m. Tradition continues as we celebrate Christmas Day this Thursday. Wear your red and green and go all out with Christmas. Grab Friday is overall day. Here at CHS, because Carno is overall better than Woodlands, deck out those overalls and come show them off at our overall pep rally. Wristbands are on sale for $1 this week during all lunches. Don't miss out. The Interact Club and the Leukemia and Lymphomia, Lymphoma Society would like to thank everyone that donated their change drive last week. They raised $242.68 uh, cents in dollars. The most they raised, the most, the most, the grade that raised the most money was the sophomores. Congratulations! Also, Internet Club is selling Scream World tickets on October 15th until October 31st to support Montgomery County Women's Shelter. If you are interested in purchasing tickets, see Miss Pierce in room 154 or Miss Cook in room 414. Congratulations to boys and girls cross country. Uh, teams on the outstanding season. Varsity finished fourth in the district championships led by Hannah Galt who advanced to the regional championships. The Varsity boys took seventh led by Eric Pinata and the freshman boys who took third led by the newly crowned district championship James McDonald. Come show your talent show this year's talent come show your talent and this year's talent show on fifth on November 15th. Sign up for an audition by scanning one of the QR codes on any talent show poster. Auditions are next week, October 16th through 18th, so hurry to secure your spot. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to follow us at KTIG News on all social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, CHS, stay strong, finish strong. Make sure to tune in Monday for KTIG News.